Sure, sure. Hello. Great. So, hi everyone, and welcome to Innovation Nation with Musicians Union. Um, I'm Holly, and I'm the Digital Event Coordinator. So, if you've got any questions, just ask in the chat box. And um, we'd also encourage you to ask any questions that you have in the chat box to your right, and we'll get to those at the end. Um, and without further ado, I'll pass you over to Louise, who is leading this discussion. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. It's all a bit strange, isn't it, doing this online, but I'm Louise stannard Powell, and I'm the Regional Officer for the Musicians' Union in Scotland and Northern Ireland. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, I'm delighted to be part of Resonate this year and I'm joined by some amazing musicians today, Finlay Napier, Siobhan Wilson and Rachel K. Collier. And um, today we're going to, our panel is called Innovation Nation. Um, we're going to have a discussion about current challenges facing musicians, but also take a look at how people are working at the moment and potential opportunities. Um, so I'd like to kick off just by asking everyone to maybe give a quick introduction, introduce themselves and tell me a little bit about your work as a musician. So I don't know, Finley, if you want to kick us off, just to introduce right. yourself. Sorry, I've just realised my laptop's about to run out of batteries. Oh, here we go. First problem. Here we go. First problem. There we are. Oh, well, how about that? Siobhan? Oh, we'll get... Siobhan, could you kick off, please? Sure, yeah. I'm a songwriter, a composer. Um, I own a record label to administer my own compositions. And just now I'm composing for music, library, production stuff and video games. I am a touring artist, but not so much this year I exist online now. <laughs> Rachel, hi. Hey, yeah, hey everybody, I'm Rachel. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Welsh electronic uh, music producer and performer. It's kind of how I like to describe myself. Um, yeah, I released my debut album last year, um, self-produced, self-released. Um, but alongside that, I was kind of like doing a bit of a YouTube thing, um, not really on purpose, I just, found when I started performing electronically, the like uh, opportunities to where to perform were kind of slim. So I started posting uh, videos on YouTube alongside that. And if anything, I think that's been one of the things that's helped me propel my career uh, the most rather than sort of the straight up traditional route. Um, and then sort of when like this year kicked off and everything else, um, yeah, it, it actually kind of, <laughs> even though I sort of used to moan about how, how hard YouTube was <laughs> and things like that, but I actually never felt uh, more grateful for kind of already having a little bit of an online presence going into lockdown and, and, and everything else. Um, and like Siobhan said, I, I also we were touring last year, so there's been absolutely no shows this year, but uh, yeah, I've just kind of used, I guess, the um, screen as my stage. Great, great to have you here, Rachel. And Finley, are you all right? Yeah. You're in the tech. Oh, <laughs> oh, so I'm Finley. Um, I run. What do I do? I've got quite a few things that I do. So primarily, I'm a singer-songwriter, and um, I used to I used to tour and play concerts for people. Um, I do a bit of organising as well. I organise um, the late night sessions at Celtic Connections. Um, when that was happening. <laughs> uh, what else do I organise? Oh yeah, I run Glasgow Songwriting Festival and this year, um, for the obvious reason, um, I moved that online. Um, so that was like uh, four, four tutors um, and 32 participants doing a weekend songwriting festival. Um, I run songwriting retreats. Again, I had to take one of them online in February. Myself and Boo Huardine did that. Um, and that was one for Maniac Moore. So that was two tutors and uh, 12 participants. And um, I'm about to do a series of four week long songwriting retreats that will be free wow. to musicians in Scotland. Um, myself and Boo have set that up. So that's, I mean, that's not, well, it's official, but we haven't launched it yet. But I, if this is as good a place as any to tell you about that. But yeah, and then I do gigs online and um that kind of thing so fantastic um right so just to get started let's acknowledge as we know it's been an absolutely incredibly difficult year for our industry as a whole um 
certainly the Musicians Union, a large majority of our members saw their work decimated overnight as we all went into lockdown. And just to give you a bit of background, at the MU we responded by providing urgent support and guidance to our members who were affected by cancellations and financial hardship. Um, so we've launched our, we launched a coronavirus hardship fund. Um, we've been lobbying very hard to fight for musicians and in particular on behalf of those who have fallen through the cracks and unable to access any government support. So we've been helping our members navigate the ever-changing guidance and restrictions. Um, we're also engaging with civil servants and politicians on a daily basis and a priority is some kind of accessible financial support package for musicians to see them through to when uh, when pre-COVID work opportunities may resume. And as we know, uh, people around the world have turned to music to help them through this crisis. Um, music makers have risen to the challenge of COVID-19 and providing support for those in quarantine. And we've all had to adapt completely to new different ways of working. And both creators and music fans have depended on digital media throughout this pandemic. And a wide range of approaches to making and sharing and experiencing music have arisen. So I'd like to chat a little bit about that and hear a little bit more about what you've been working on. But let's um, go to back to the, the start to earlier on in this year. Um, when the pandemic hit and we all went into lockdown, how did this affect your work? Um, how, what were the specific challenges that affected you as a songwriter or producer or um, as a performer? I would just want to touch on that. Um, Finley, do you want to kick us off? Um, I, I lost, I think, the first, I first gig I lost, I lost before lockdown. Um, and it was like, that was the sort of the first like little story little pebble <laughs> and then the avalanche came i had a tour supporting eddie reader i had a tour with my pal megan henwood we were making an album um which or oh, making an ep rather um we've got this project called story song scientists and so we had a tour with that um cancelled so that was all of october and november that was in my diary gone and everything else that I had in the diary gone in about, I think about a one week period. So it was absolutely terrifying, but thankfully I had paid tax and submitted a tax return for the last three years. Um, so I was able to get a bit of help from the government and my wife's a musician as well. So obviously the pair of us were absolutely terrified, um, but because of the help we got from like, the, the various funds and um, we were able to sort of get our head above water and one of the first things we did actually was buy a decent home recording set up so that we could at least make and broadcast decent music we realized that would be the thing so yeah it's pretty scary it still is pretty scary i mean we're still going well be all right i've got this tours tours in next year and all that kind of stuff but they might yet get cancelled you know it's that's a that's scary um, I, th I would say the one decision that we did make based on a thing that a friend of mine from Canada said um, was that instead of going into overdrive and like producing music and putting it online and making videos and all that, we just went, this is how much we were able to, to cope with. And we just worked at that level. Um, and I could see some people doing loads and loads and loads and some people just doing absolutely nothing. Um, and I think that was maybe quite a good call because the sort of the impact on our the mental health was was actually I don't think we even realized it until now we look back and we're like bloody hell what even happened then you know so I thanks for sharing that um Siobhan I don't know if you want to pitch in on how this all affected you when the pandemic hit yeah, I think that's a really important point that Finley you're making about, you know, recognising how much you're capable of producing. I think everybody, you know, in a, in a moment of crisis and how, how much um, energy you have and how you're spending it, especially when working from home. I think it's really good to look at your energy levels. Like, it's kind of like you're not working from home, you're sleeping in your office when you're recording and on your laptop all day and these kinds of things and everybody's different everyone's got a different coping mechanism and actually mine is to kind of produce and create and I typically kind of sometimes burn out after you know a big 
period of like producing new music and I suppose for me when I learned that everything was cancelled um there was a shock definitely and it was you know kind of scary because I was worried about the industry and what would happen and what the world would look like and I guess my reaction to it was like I've got quite an anxious disposition I just kind of was like I love watching doomsday preppers on Netflix and the <laughs> kind of like the playing video games that are quite apocalyptic um so I felt like I'd been waiting for my whole life for this to happen but anyway I kind of went online and saw the 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 challenges that I was facing of not being able to play live and not being able to be in studio and not being able to meet up face to face with people as as kind of opportunities to find new ways to somehow try to adapt and I think that businesses whether they're you're one person running your own business or you know somebody who's a CEO of a larger company responsible for employing a hundred people innovation is crucial to continuing like the success of any kind of sort of musical organization and um so I just tried to put everything online and created a Patreon community to live stream shows and make podcasts and take all of the resources that I had and just kind of channel them through a platform that I that I liked the look of and that I knew would work for me and so that's what I've done. Excellent and Rachel how did it impact you? Um, yeah so uh, initially it was pretty scary like I said the shows cancelled I had a lot of traveling plans like um, for like international workshops and things like that masterclass in Madrid yeah, Berlin, um, loads of like exciting stuff. Um, and I also had quite a big uh, musical director job uh, that was gonna like pay, you know, a good few months rent. So that it was quite terrifying at the beginning. Um, but uh, actually I think the sort of foundations I laid like in the, in the years before, um, that's when I started to, for the first time ever really reap the rewards of that as I then, it was like, all my work got cancelled and then it was like oh there's more work coming in from places I haven't had it before so that was quite interesting um and yeah yeah really helped actually to just sort of get things going and then um like uh, like Siobhan said I had a small Patreon community and it was actually really cool because everyone being on zoom and stuff inspired me to like oh I'm maybe now just going to yeah build upon these foundations I've like you know that were quite small that I've already kind of built so with my patron then I started to do like a monthly zoom and challenges and I've like really built up my patron community now um to the point where it is super fun for me it's, it's not like a job you know it's like I actually have like built a family and um and we do like sort of different topics each month music and mental health and we all have these big discussions so that has been positive, just having that time to, okay, let's focus on what I've already built here, put my energy back into it. Because I feel like as musicians, as musicians, you know, last year we're spreading ourselves so thin, you know, we need to be covering promotion, marketing, touring, writing, rehearsing, you know, producing new music. It was always very, very spread, very thin. So uh, this year then it's just been actually, okay, I'm going to focus in on these things that, maybe are not massive yet but things I do enjoy and so and that's been good actually and it's been an eye-opener as well to the point where I'm like you know after this lockdown ends maybe I don't want to be driving around the country you know for 100 quid in my car like up to Durham you know I just <laughs> so it's actually been quite quite interesting and then and then it's just again like obviously how to turn that into revenue um is just kind of being a little bit creative so it's like okay I always find with artists and musicians, um, you know, my friends will say to me, like, how do I get my socials going, blah, blah, blah. And I just think, you know, social media is just you at the end of the day. And it's kind of just opening up, sharing that bits of you with people. Um, and I always like to try and share a bit of my process and, you know, like post tutorial things. And then the way I've been able to like turn it into revenue is say, oh, if you want like a more in depth tutorial, if you want to get, blah 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 head to my patreon and even little things like selling you know the stems from your work and your samples and like 
that that type of stuff is valuable to people so um it's just kind of yeah just kind of thinking okay right what always having that question in your head you know because you, you want to be sort of on top of people you want to give something give something to people that they that they can inspire them or or you know like join in on you know it's about kind of leaving the conversation open instead of like all me 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 on socials you know so just try to yeah just kind of like um yeah just uh, when i when i when i like work on my socials just think actually okay what are people what are people actually like to see now they don't want to see you brag about how many streams you've got <laughs> things like that's not really helpful to any musician so it's kind of the way i like to run my social media is just to be an open book really and share the process and i feel like that's helped then through the back door turn into oh cool like build a community that will support me because they like what i've got to say you know so i found that patreon so yeah so I, in a way it's it's bittersweet you know because um if i if i hadn't had this opportunity to just like actually whoa sit still for five minutes would I have really worked on the Patreon and all these other things? So, um, but, yeah, that's, yeah, that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing that. And certainly we'll touch on um, that a little bit more as we go on. Um, obviously, Siobhan, you mentioned that you have a bit of a nervous disposition at times and felt a bit anxious at the start. Did you find that it affected um, your ability to tap into your creativity and writing when this happened? Or did you find yes. you writing more or was it a mental block and it was a difficult time for you? I think, um, yeah, like touching on kind of like what Finley was saying before in terms of like um, knowing how much you can kind of cope with. Like I even though I was struggling, I was like writing a lot and doing a lot and producing a lot. But maybe now I'm paying for it because I feel quite tired at the end of the year, <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like so... I use that time to create a lot of stuff and generate new ideas and new systems. And now is a good time, I think, to reflect and, and look back and say, um, how did I cope with, you know, all of the changes of this year? I think the, like the key word is adapting. Um, like, how did I adapt? I don't know. I think a lot of it's kind of adrenaline fueled. It's such a strange situation that we've all found ourselves in this year and it's affected everybody in such a unique way that it's like um yeah i'm i'm kind of in that zone now where i'm thinking what do i want to do next year how am i gonna recalibrate like sort of my patreon page how am i going to continue with that and what kind of live streams do i want to do and what kind of um new opportunities can I see myself trying to engage with in, in January and after Christmas? And so we've um, actually, because I liked my fan space on Patreon so much, we started another one, which was, it's called Power, and it's to finance um, like creative commissions for female artists who are mm. looking to make work. And so I guess for me, like I'm quite hopeful about like next year and all the things that are popping up right now on member subscription based um, systems and live streams and collaborations and new technology and hopefully new platforms with, I know Delix just launched something new for live streaming and there are various companies doing, you know, it's quite exciting to think what will next year look like in terms of the internet and how will music evolve within that. I agree. Yeah, I was, I was just about to touch on that, actually. Um, obviously, you've all spoken about ways that you've altered your work a little bit and um, how you've managed to keep working. And um, Finley, you touched on the fact that you bought a new home studio. And um, have, have you had to learn any new technology or had to get to grips with anything new? Have you had, how have you found that? The, the studio stuff, I just upgraded the, the gear that I had yeah. to something that, that something that would match up. So, but the, the thing I really had to get, get used to was making videos for people. Um, and at, at the start of the year, at the start of lockdown, there were people just calling up going, we'll give you 50 quid if you make us a 20 minute video. <laughs> and that was like, yes, 
I need, I need 50 quid three days later. I'm like, oh my God, making videos is really, really hard mm -hmm. and really time consuming. And I don't have lights. Like the light that I've got here, there's four of us took over this studio in July. Because um, that's the other thing, of course, um, you know, you're trying to film something in your house and I've got a dog and a six-year-old daughter um, and, and a wife <laughs> and I live in a tenement flat. So there's two people live downstairs, three people live upstairs and a family live across the hall. And it's just like, I'll just start filming. And it's like someone decides it's time to mow the lawn. Game over. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, or like, I mean, I've got, I put one up. I can't remember who it was for. And I put one up and I kind of think it, it, it just it perfectly captured the home recording experience of me filming something and like you see me playing guitar and the dog's head just comes up here at the back of the screen and it starts going <laughs> and eventually it's just barking at me oh, and I'm like that right I'm off and then I did like a screen wipe and then it's like that's me back it's been you know the dog's been for the toilet been for a walk it's been another half hour and then literally as I strum the last chord you hear my family come into the house and like my whole daughter's like screaming and parting she's like and I'm like that <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable um, yeah. it was impossible I mean I think that things like that were impossible but it took me a wee while to realize that if somebody says I'll give you 50 quid for a 20 minute video you go no because for me a 20 minute video is three days work so either you pay me for three days work or I'm not doing it mm -hmm. um, and then they're like oh you can just do something on your phone and I'm like you can't really because no. I have that like I have standards yeah um and I, you know, and that's the other thing that's become really clear is like I've got a pal um, who's like a, a music producer in the sense that he produces events and he's going to look, flick through these live streams and the, just the quality is so bad. Um, and I, of some of the events and I'm like, mm -hmm. and eventually he, thankfully he came on to, to my one after I bought my new universal audio interface. And <laughs> light my fancy microphone that lights up and all that Ooh. um and what <laughs> don't even know what it's called just it's got lights in it it's better than all the other microphones because it's got two leds in it <laughs> um but i so i guess um yeah getting my head around i think it's premier premier oh. premier pro is what the thing that i had so i spent loads of time on youtube like trying to yeah. figure out how to learn how to use that um and i used it loads and i haven't used it for about three or four months and i would have to actually start again from scratch <laughs> oh and the other thing i found out by the way if you've got an iphone this is great advice this will save you hours there is an app it costs 15 quid and it's called filmic pro and it films from your filmic pro and it films from your iphone and it has a fixed um oh man i can't even remember the name of it when you film something on your on your not it has a fixed focus as well which is really useful but uh you can also film yourself where an entire 20 minute thing where you've set the focus on your microphone rather than your face uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've learned from experience. No, um, it's got a fixed, a set frame rate. Sorry, I'm set frame rate. And when you film on your iPhone and on your computer, it doesn't have a fixed frame rate. So when you go to match it with audio that you've recorded beautifully into Pro Tools at the same time, they don't match up. Um, and it took me three weeks to work that out. Um, and it involved an awful lot of messing around. And then I bought Filmic Pro and it has changed my life. And it's 15 quid. And I, to be honest with you, it's a small, it was a small price to pay. And it was a wee bit tricky, like that thing about the fixed focus. That's a wee bit tricky. <laughs> like, especially if you're filming yourself, you know, and you've got the camera pointing away for you, go and sit down. And while you've been behind the camera, it's really focused on the mic. But whatever. Um, okay. Yeah. That that was a that was a lifesaver, but um, oh gosh, oh, oh, man. So many <laughs> I mean, even like this this wee studio that I've got here with my pal with my with three of my pals, it's it's really great. But even then, it's like um, I hired it out to somebody the other day to record something, and there's a studio downstairs, and the bass amp was right underneath, 
and it was just like some really aggressive bass player like living oh. <laughs> living downstairs <laughs> sorry yeah. thanks for that Finley. yeah um, sorry, I live there. that's that's really interesting to hear about thanks um Rachel something you touched on a little while ago I would just want to go back to I was really interested to hear more about because I don't know a lot about it about these sample packs that you've released um that is just thinking about new things that I'd like to learn a little bit about could you tell me a little bit about that yeah so I mean it's actually in the grand scheme of things a very easy thing to do if you make music because you've made your track already um and you've just obviously got all your parts and you can choose you know tiny little snippets of it which obviously is a tiny tiny part to bounce so it takes about you know five seconds to bounce it out just make sure all the levels are loud enough you know maybe louder than they would be in your actual production um you know export them as a high quality wav uh zip them up and then you can just sell them so i actually i don't have a lot i've got uh, i think i've got like two on my band camp for sale but i also again like perks for my patrons you know like I give them away then to my patrons as well like free sample pack if you go here and actually i when i was doing my album is uh, i actually said if you like pre-order it you can get free sample pack that kind of thing and in the end you know got like a lot of orders which i don't think i maybe would have got if i wasn't giving away the freebies so it's just such an easy thing to do and i think if you're like recording sort of cool you know and you're doing say finley if you're recording some cool guitar and you like process it in a really cool way and like you know yeah. and, and and sounds that you're quite proud of really that you've created you know music producers and, and music makers just love that like you know different textures i mean and obviously you can you can take it one step further because you know places like splice and like loop masters and all these online um sort of producer sites will actually license sample packs off you as well you know um i haven't got that far yet i i it's something i want to build more on um but yeah um i also released an idea yeah yeah it's just it's, an, it's such an easy thing to do and i think you can do it whoever you are if you're a folk singer songwriter you know why why not like yeah a few little one chord two chords a loop it'd be really really easy to do yeah, yeah it's hilarious little... i totally never thought of that yeah and 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 what what's what's a good thing to do sometimes as well if there's those reverb or delays and things like that you know maybe do a dry one and a wet one um and you could also be a bit creative you could reverse some you know um and just have like yeah like a finley's beauty guitar pack you know like something like that like it's just it's just a very very easy uh easy thing to do um I've, uh, I've fallen in love with that thing it's on special offer at the moment actually that um you know sound is it sound toys have this thing called effects rack uh, oh yeah sound toys yeah 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 i love sound toys oh my god mm. it's like the best thing for um making things that sound crap sound sound great <laughs> Frequently, they sound even worse. Like that. Really <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But that's the thing I, as well. People like actually, just like, like combining, like you could. I yeah. guess I could do some really simple things, and then just you, you like, could even just, just if you wanted. Mad to, effect. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you could even do it. So I've been doing it as like a side product, but I know I've got a couple of mates who literally just make samples. You know, that's what they do, and like. That's quite fun because you're sitting there and you're basically doing sound design. You can you can use those samples yourself. And obviously you don't really need that much to do this. There's so many free plugins like Finley, you just said about sound toys. But if you're on plugin boot boutique, there are just hundreds of free plugins that you can use in your, um, you know, in your DAWs. So if you wanted to, you could have a really fun day where you're like, Gonna make some samples of my own music and i'm just gonna sell them actually thinking about it i would love to do that <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know where it's not like some other but i like i i know quite a few people that i follow on instagram and things like that they they have their whole business made out of sample packs i mean like one guy posted last night like oh yeah my drums that knock that's what it's called all over the grammys this year which they are because you know these uh people you know it's actually producers produce with samples you know so it's like um it's definitely something worth uh worth looking into and like promoting especially if you are spending time 
like recording great quality you know things so and i guess you know the times we're in today we really do if anything need a good recording setup thanks so much rachel that's really interesting mm. um moving on a little bit i'm interested in hearing about I've, working in collaboration um have you managed to work in collaboration with others throughout this time and um have you been doing that virtually and is this the new normal i hate that phrase <laughs> um Siobhan, i don't know if this is something you've been able to do at all yeah this year has been a really exciting year for collaboration i started a new album last year and actually i chose to do the album completely like analog in a really kind of old school vintage studio in Chicago with a producer called Steve Albini who's like kind of um like the opposite of like modern digital producer he's like very much um what you would describe as like a vintage setup and I used real string players from um, Scotland and um, some of them playing the Scottish Chamber Orchestra I was really looking for that sound that was like like really kind of old school mm -hmm. authentic sort of like a sort of live sound mm -hmm. and then of course I found myself um, all of a sudden not being able to necessarily complete that in the way that I had envisaged last year because meeting up face to face became suddenly impossible and that's what the whole of the album was you know based around last year was like kind of rejecting modern technology in a sense because I spend so much time in front of a laptop mm. that I wanted a bit of a break from that and it was interesting getting to record in um analog because I found that I wasn't as visually driven to the recording process and I was using my ears a lot more so then another um dimension was added to that process this year when I was kind of made to complete it complete the album remotely and that was an amazing opportunity I worked with Luciano Rossi in London who's a film like composer a producer and a, a musician he plays in bands uh, too and we collaborated on my last EP and we ended up kind of finishing um some of the interludes and um, in tracks in between like pieces composing pieces of music between the tracks and mixing into a slight soundscape to create a finished product and um, using zoom and using logic just sharing screens and using logic and and transferring files to each other um, and that kind of thing so it the whole album took a turn and twisted and sounds completely different and I think that's one of the most that's the coolest thing about this year is like you make music that sounds totally different to what it would have if the pandemic hadn't happened and it's kind of I've just sort of gone with that and I've started doing a lot more work with colleagues in America who do like a bit of music production and like library music and some samples and things uh for that reason too and that's not something that i really did last year the year before uh it's just trying to just being able to share files and work with people in in a different country and that aren't you know in the same room as you that's answered the question yeah that's great finley have you been doing a lot of online collaborations have you been working remotely i, I kind of always have which is the weird thing oh, i say always have but like uh, um, I worked, I did a, an EP with a, a singer that was in The Voice, the American Voice, a, a long time ago called Rebecca Lobie. Um, and we did a tour of the UK um, at the same time as The Beast from the East. Remember that massive oh, storm? Yeah. <laughs> wiped out loads of gigs. Strangely, that's when our tour was. But I, we did that online. So she's in Austin, Texas, and the producer was in Atlanta. And uh, we just recorded things on Pro Tools to a click track and kind of sent them around and we made this this EP um, and the producer kind of like added like drums and bass and all kinds of stuff it was it's really it's fantastic yeah, it, was, it came out really it came out really well um uh, yeah I made an album with Angus Lyon pretty much by accident I just went down to the studio after lockdown lifted his studio um 
which is called Grand's House. And we went down there and I was supposed to be there for a day and I ended up spending two days there. And at the end of the two days, we had so much stuff. I thought if we could just have one more day, we'd have an album here. So, and that was all the things that I'd written for my Patreon people, uh, the sort of songs I'd been writing and putting up. So my Patreons will get that free when we finished it. And that's what I'm doing today, actually, in here is I'm doing backing vocals for for that. So that's kind of like I'm doing backing vocals and sending it to him. He's doing recording stuff in his studio today and, and kind of assembling the tracks. So we've given ourselves a deadline of the 14th of December to have it mixed. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, and then, like, I've been working... Boo Hjordin, who's one of the other people that's got this, uh, Boo and I have been doing loads of mentoring despite living, like a block apart in Glasgow. We were able to, we did loads and loads of work, just like um, writing songs and things like that. Um, like sending each other bits, just like phone recordings backwards and forwards, and then like a like, lyric, like photograph of what lyrics we had and chord charts. So we wrote a few, like three or four songs like that. Um, and then I'm doing an EP with Megan Henwood. She's in Oxford. The last album we did, we did together in the studio. Last EP, sorry, we did in the studio, but this one we're, we're, we're doing um, on Pro Tools. Uh, and whatever. well, that's a really interesting one. She's on Logic and I'm on Pro Tools. <laughs> We've been recording everything at different samples. Oh, God. <laughs> so oh, my God. If, if ever an album needed a producer, this is the one because it's a totally, like a total mess. It's sounding really good, but... I have this horrible feeling that we're going to have it all assembled at the end and then we're going to go, should we just go to Oxford for a date or, and just record it in the studio? Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's a good person. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, we've all kind of touched on Bandcamp, um, sorry, not Bandcamp, Patreon. Um, Bandcamp's another one we can maybe chat about. Um, but I'd, I wonder, Rachel, just talking about Patreon, um, you spoke about it earlier could you just for anybody who doesn't really know what it is just explain a little bit about what the platform is um and you obviously use it quite a lot i just want to hear a little bit more about um how you use it uh yeah so patreon for anyone who just doesn't know what it is it's just i guess it's another platform but a platform where you post kind of more exclusive stuff um, that, you know, in the hope that, you know, people would want to see, so they actually subscribe for it. So uh, with, with, with cash, I guess. Um, and there's separate tiers, so you can offer like different rewards for, for a different tier. So, you know, um, I've actually got four tiers, so four different levels uh, uh, of like how much you can pledge. Um, I think, and, and mine is a monthly pledge, but I think you, some people you can do like pay on video and, um, and now they've just done an annual thing as well. So you can sign up annually and get a discount. Um, yeah, and how do I use it? I, it's definitely an exclusive platform. Um, stuff on there isn't shared on any other platforms so and it's definitely more of a community like i have a discord as well that goes with it so we have like a discord community that you are automatically um allowed into when you're a patron and you know we chat every day on there like we've got like different groups we chat about gear we chat about everyday chat we have a motivation group i just started a new one pets and vintage clothes because like surprisingly all of my patrons you know are into the pets and vintage clothes so um i'm joining i'm totally joining yeah so, so it's really cute actually so it's um yeah it's a really nice uh, a really nice community but uh and then and then you know the different and then the levels you know like i'll offer my top tier like i'll actually give them my ableton sets and the stem so if they want to they can really open my productions and go in on them and and then I'll offer like the, the lowest tier is just, you know, part of the community. The next tier they get tutorial videos. So it's like, yeah, it was kind of, I mean, initially I never knew how to start my Patreon because I was like, I don't know what I can really offer. Um, like, what can I give, you know? But then that's when I started thinking, well, you know, I'm posting these performances and things and maybe it would be interesting for people to see how you plug it all in and blah, 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 blah. So, and surprisingly, yes, that was uh, of interest to people. I, I just think it's about sharing the behind the scenes stuff and how you kind of like 
do everything because you know the other social media platforms like instagram and you know not so much youtube maybe but you know we're only ever showing like the good stuff you know so it's like just the real stuff is kind of what how i like to think of my patreon i feel like they definitely know me more, way more than like people on instagram that just see like a little flash of something you know um but i actually started mine oh gosh i did a gig and someone said to me have you got a patreon i want to subscribe and i was i didn't know what it was i was like no what's that and then i like checked it out and i was like oh so i think i've been on it now like two and a bit years um but this year it's grown more than ever so that's good um, i like um, yeah sorry i was just gonna ask you um we oh, sorry i interrupt there but just um if you we had a, a quick chat a while ago about um you mentioned that patreon you felt was a safer space for women i just obviously um continue with what you're gonna say but i just wondered if you could touch on that as well yeah like i was just um thinking rachel when you were talking about how i also feel like i can show a more like real mm. side or perhaps intimate like um side of my musical process and and my kind of music making and artist sort of like the behind the scenes stuff and the fact that patreon feels safer for me personally mm. um means that i'm able to use it with more confidence yeah because i think that we assess the negative consequences of opening up on a platform such as patreon as less mm -hmm open to harassment, less open to abuse. And I think that's really important. It's, it's something really crucial that's come out of this year is that people are talking a lot more about safety online as we're using the internet so much more. And especially like musicians and mental health and, and staying healthy and staying safe when, when using um, social media. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, because Patreon is a member's it's a member space mm. and you've got like um, details of who's following you. So it's not totally anonymous. Yeah. And you're not just kind of one person opening up to a faceless crowd. You yeah. really get to know one-on-one -on -one who the people are on the Zoom call or yeah. who the comments are coming from. And I know that Patreon has like community guidelines, which are, um, which mean that like, People can agree and disagree with each other and have arguments, but if abuse or harassment happens, it's much more likely that there will be support exactly. and an element of safeguarding, not just from a fan base or from your own uh, team, but Patreon itself is held accountable for, in some aspects, not in every aspect, for like the, what the money's being raised for that you're, you know, why you have a Patreon in the first place and what's happening on it. And so there is an element of moderation which happens yeah. in that space. And I think there's a huge benefit in that kind of introducing that into our musical culture mm, is a really a positive thing, you know, to have come from this year. I think a lot of artists are realizing that we need that. And yeah. kind of, um, we've got a lot of support for mental health after maybe using social media and live streaming which can take a toll on a lot of people's energy levels mm -hmm. but i think what's really important is that we create the platforms and use the platforms that are encouraging prevention of abuse rather than focusing on you know dealing with it afterwards does that make sense yeah definitely it's like it's uh it's one of my favorite platforms actually because well obviously i know we make money from it but like it has actually changed my life like it's um yeah you know it, it is guaranteed whatever a certain amount of money each month which is amazing before that i didn't have that um and then you know these people support you so it's just it's really cool and like you know you you're right you do have to sort of establish a little bit of a like flow with it like with my community initially even things like setting up a promo space for them to promo themselves and and like because obviously they're all musicians as well wanting to learn um so it's like a few things you know but you know and you sort of need to say like no rudeness no one anyone being an idiot will not be tolerated and yeah. i i do feel like exactly what you said if one person was gonna say something bad well one i would boot them out but two like 
everyone would be like what like would stick up for you and I think I think that's great and I actually think like it's really good as well because it makes it puts a bit of value back into the music world it's like musicians these days it's just so flipping hard if you don't do this extra kind of you know I'm this person and I can give you this as well as my music like if you're just doing the music these days I mean like what it's just impossible like you we all know how like the least amount of money I make is from Spotify. You know, it's just, it's true though, isn't it? You know, it's like. I, I worked out that if I stood outside my flat, right, on Shield Road and I sold one CD a week, I'd make twice the amount of money that I make on Spotify, Spotify a month, which is really, really terrible. Yeah. I mean, let, it'd be better busking. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You know, I we actually like so I did this album last year and I actually was amazingly got funding from the Welsh Arts Council and PRS Foundation and things like that. Um, but that's another reason why I've been better off probably this year is because I haven't spent thousands on a campaign and like, you know, actually releasing music costs loads. I mean, yeah. So it's like if you can have these that, you know, side hustle, Patreon, whatever, like workshops, things like that then it just makes it a lot more enjoyable. Cause it's like, oh, I need to pay an artist now to do some artwork for me. Or, you know, I could do the art myself as well if I wanted, but you know, oh, say, say I would like to like get someone to do this or, you know, all these little things, like it just adds up so much. And when you, if you are actually earning a little bit from the side hustle to put back into the music, then it all kind of makes sense. Whereas I feel like if you just go at it, like music, 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 it's, I'm sorry, it is impossible. <laughs> So, the, yeah. Spotify, I mean, the Spotify thing is is actually, I think, it's something that I know that the MU are, 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 are addressing. Um, and it's, it's something I feel quite strongly about. But I had quite an amazing thing because early in lockdown, we had a, my wife and I had an album finished called The Ledger. Um, and it came out, we released it on the 1st of May. Um, and we didn't put it on Spotify at all. And lots of people said, oh, it won't sell if it's not on Spotify. Sold absolutely fine. And lots of people bought it. Wow. And actually, we paid off most of the costs of the album. So despite the fact that we were we had all the tour for that cancelled, yeah. um, we were able to pay off most of the album. So we're actually, we're almost, almost in the, in the black, right? Oh, wow. Um, and yeah. that's a record released in the middle of lockdown. Um, and that's because it wasn't on Spotify. And people were literally going, where can I find this online? You can't. You can only buy it from our Bandcamp page. Um, but in six months' time, we promise we'll put it on Spotify, which is what we've done. So it's now on all the things. But it now occurs to me that if I released the next thing, the thing that I'm doing with Angus, if a record company doesn't pick it up, I am not going to put it online for about a year. I think I'll release a single from it a month mm. and turn it onto Spotify a one song a month, because Spotify don't want an album, they want one thing at a time anyway. Mm. And it's easy to get that up. And I'm also considering not putting the, putting a different mix of the album on Spotify. So if you want the album, the actual album, the way it's mm -hmm. meant to be, you, have, you just have to buy it. Because I can't afford to give it away for free mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. I don't think, like, and I've had this, it's, I mean, like you go to do your final mix and you just go, Let's just not have those backing vocals and not have that third and fourth guitar and take out that Mellotron part mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to give to Spotify and then the album that we give to everyone else ha has got all of this other beautiful stuff. Yeah, yeah. Know, all the lovely things from Finlay Sample. Part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm aware that time is bashing on. I've got so, so many questions that I want to ask you, but this hour is going so quickly and we want to um, have some time for the audience to ask some questions. Um, Sorry, certainly. Um, I, sorry. I was just going to say, see about the, the Patreon thing. Um, I mentioned my friend Rebecca Lobby that I made the EP with. She has written an ebook called, that's what I was doing on my computer when you guys were talking. It's called Patreon Launch tips by Rebecca oh, Lobby cool. and it's basically if you don't have a Patreon it's a free free <laughs> absolutely free how to make your own Patreon and Rebecca Lobby is like one of the first people to use Patreon and oh, wow. really make make money from it 
Um, and what I'll do is I found this like I found this wee article about her on Patreon. Um, so here you go. I'll stick it in the chat. Um, and here's a link to her Patreon. But I'm pretty sure that she just gives. I think she's giving that book away for free. But because she's just still asleep because she lives in Austin, um, I I don't want to just give it to you all without asking. So, um, but send me an email or whatever, and wow. or a message, Thanks, and so I'll, I'll I'll I'm happy to share that with anybody that's that's here. Do you know what I mean? That's, um, that's great. I feel uncomfortable sharing it wider than that without <laughs> getting a permission. You know I mean, sorry. Thank you. Um, as I say, um, I'm aware of the time, and I have so many questions that I would have loved to have asked you, but um, we're running out of time. So, um, just to mention to everyone, there's um lots of advice and support in the MU website. So um, check that out for um, signposts to um, any kind of grants and financial aid if you're needing it at this time. And also I want to mention that there are links to um, mental health charities if you need a bit of support at this time. Um, we were hoping to chat a bit more about that, but um, just to kind of finish up, I just wanted to ask you if there were any just general words of advice or support that you could give the people who are listening today, um, anybody who's working in the industry, anything you want to mention or any opportunities that um, people might be interested in before we finish up? Uh, I think what, one thing I, I would say is if you're starting a Patreon, it's quite a good idea to have a few things, a few posts in hand. Mm. So like instead of launching it today, start working on it today yeah. and launch it next month so then you've got a few things in the back and you're on the back burner um and i certainly like that was one of the things that i didn't do but also it was lockdown so i had loads of time but now my time's starting to get filled up i'm finding it a wee bit harder to mm. uh, and i think one of the, the most amazing things about it from you is that this place um is paid my rent for this place is paid for by my patreon so it's like a free place for me to come and write songs mm. that doesn't have a dog and a child in it or my neighbor <laughs> who's right. thanks Finley. siobhan was there anything that you wanted to mention yeah i'd say like whatever works for you like whatever the platform is that you think you want to try or you want that works for you that you like the sound of just go for it and you might have not imagined doing live shows on Facebook for donations before and you might find yourself doing really new things Instagram live if that works for you or um, writing new music doing collaborating with people who you never thought you would have before you might be doing a completely different job that you might never have imagined yourself doing this year because of circumstances you've ended up doing and there's never any shame in doing different things or things that you you know that you maybe didn't want to at the beginning of the year and you've maybe changed and maybe you're starting out in music and it seems a bit daunting right now and there's absolutely no like shame in finding that scary either and it's just to try and find the things that um you can enjoy and just try and run with them even though it's quite a difficult year to do that in mm. i'd also say treat your workspace like if you're working from home with a lot of respect and if you're doing a live stream pretend that it's like a normal gig in your backstage and do all the nice things and self-care and tlc that you would normally do after a show <laughs> like adrenaline come down and that's a really good advice all the same things <laughs> but there's not you know so it's kind of weird so give yourself lots of time if you are doing the live shows online to really take care of yourself when you're doing that. That's great advice. <laughs> I'm just thinking about me like literally running back round the block with the dog, like <laughs> shouting at the dog. <laughs> just please do a poo. <laughs> I've five minutes before it goes live, you know. Um, so I would say um, one thing yeah. I think super important with like, you know, doing like this kind of career and like, you know, um, it's, it's like Siobhan said earlier as well, it's so easy in social media land to get disheartened straight away because it is flipping hard to build and grow. So like I always say, and I say this to my patrons as well, it's like, guys, it sounds cheesy and I know whatever, like it's all right for me to say, but I at once had 500 followers. Do you know what I mean? Like it's about whatever you do who you are and you whatever you want to focus on make sure you flipping love it 
because then when you just post that little bit of whatever the snapshot of that on socials that's just a side product that will hopefully build but then you're still having a great time I think that's so important because I see it happen a lot people are just going at it purely to build and grow which is fine but you will get burnt out and you'll hate it and then quit so it's like Yes, do the social media thing, but do it with what you absolutely love. So that is just a byproduct, really, because I think it's just too easy to get caught up in, oh, yeah, I don't have enough followers, so I'm quitting. Well, it's like, well, hang on a minute. What are you quitting? And it's like, oh, I'm quitting music. So what was it ever really about the music or was it about the followers? Because it's like, and that's something I had to like put focus on as well. It's like, hang on a minute whatever if this post gets a couple of followers who cares I've had a great time you know, playing this and, and building this thing and I think like after I released my album I had like expectation on streams and things like that and every time I would release something I would just feel like crap after it and I had to really shift my perspective and I was like okay actually I'm confusing here business and music and music is the thing that I love and I you know like that's me and then yeah the business side okay cool so it's just really try not to mix them up so it's like okay yeah whatever it doesn't get many views or likes or whatever but like I'm still really proud of that and yeah I think I had a really good time doing it so it's like try to like mentally just separate them because otherwise you will get disheartened and yeah it's flipping hard so it's just like just try to make sure there's a way that you can mentally sustain it and that is by doing something that you truly love, whether it is engineering or whatever. That's the way I think I've been able to sustain it. Because at the end of the day, I talk, I probably talk crap on all my socials, but I'm talking about stuff I love. So, uh, you know, and the focus is, and actually the reality is when I'm like having a great time working, I'm knowing at my phone, I don't even have it in the studio. So it's like, you know, that that's what I that's what I mean. I just think find the thing that you're most passionate about and let that let let all the building and following and socials just be a side product of that. Thank you so much. Words of wisdom there. Um I don't know, do we have a few minutes for questions, Holly? Are you there, Holly? By the way, I just that was perfect timing that my puppy started barking at yeah. the <laughs> Uh, so um there haven't actually really been any questions that you guys haven't oh. touched on um so i think you've pretty much covered in everything um if there's anything you guys want to promote or talk about before we hi could i say to folk i'm i'm going to see if i can find the, the link to it right so this isn't officially launched yet but myself and boo hurdine are going to do these this is for people living in scotland um and they're going to be a series of four free songwriting workshops for musicians or anybody involved in the music industry or in fact the creative industries really that that would find some songwriting um workshops useful and um, we're doing i we're doing four of them um over the next starting in january up until april um and it's like yeah and it's just maybe to sort of kick start your creativity or maybe you want to start teaching songwriting or um maybe you just want to like you want to write songs for a play or you write, want to write songs for a specific thing that's that's kind of aimed at that kind of thing so there's a link i posted a link there in the chat it's, it's called bird on a wire mm, thanks. thanks very much has anyone else got anything they want to talk about siobhan i'd love to say um we not everybody um has like a social media following or is like um, that experienced in social media and so we've started a group called Power for um, to, to kind of unite artists um, who want to we're fundraising um, through the membership to provide commissions to provide work for female artists um, so if you want to join that if anyone's interested in seeing what that's all about send me an email and I'll tell you more about it that's probably the best way and I'm also looking for um remixes of my podcast jingle it's like a little 15 second jingle of me saying this is my podcast <laughs> so you get the files and then you can remix it however you want and it might be it's paid a little bit and it might be good 
work experience or something good for your CV. I don't know if you're interested in that. I'm going to post my email for those two things in the comments just now. Great. Um, have you got anything you want to speak about? Uh, yeah, actually, thinking of like opportunities, it's just reminding me. I recently did, um, I just teamed up with BBC Three to do, um, uh, like, uh, I actually did a Beethoven remix tutorial, but the BBC are giving away all the stems from Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, a massive sample pack. I've also created a big Ableton Live set, but they are taking, yeah, they're, they're gonna be playing out like people's submissions on Radio One and Radio Six. So definitely worth checking out the Beethoven remix. Um, Oh, it's just it's just a cool thing to get involved with and that's something like i do think budding producers should do is like be be out there you know because you never know who is going to hear it like you might think oh this is whack whatever blah blah, blah. but you know it, it like people hear things if if you just get out there you know it it, it does it does it does pay to, to just get involved in things and yeah so Sort of rather than kind of being too scared, just just do it, you know. Like my first YouTube video is filmed with an iPhone, you know, like in in the in the attic, no light, I just thinking cold. You know, we we got to start somewhere, you know. <laughs> cool. Thank you, uh, Louise. Do you want to talk about the musicians union anymore, or? Yeah, no, as I say, I'm aware of, I'm conscious of the time, but certainly, um, you know, get in touch. Um, Glasgow at the mu.org if you've got any questions that you want to ask me. Um, as I say, there's lots of advice and support and resources on the MU website. Um, there's lots of um, information there about how to navigate your work throughout the coronavirus pandemic. And, um, you know, get yourself joined up to the union if you're not a member and you're a musician. We're your trade union and we're here to yes. fight on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Finley, sir, Could I, sorry to talk over the top of you again, like a <laughs> like a white middle-class man that I am. <laughs> but can I say that a number of times in the last few years, I've had problems with things, um, especially with filming stuff, like they put a wig on me and I was in that Spanish princess and I had to sing a song. Um, and I didn't. they said, how much do you want to get paid? And I was like, I don't know. And so I called the Musicians Union and instead of getting the sort of 150 quid that I thought I got, I got like a lot of money, like a month worth of wages for dressing up in a wig and singing a song a few times. Um, and if it hadn't been for the MU, so I think it's like, as much as it's important to, to, to join the MU, it's also important to like communicate with you as well, because you guys are always there and you're incredibly helpful. So thank you. Okay. That's brilliant. Second that. Second that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so um, I think we better wrap it up now, um, but thank you so much to all our panellists. That was really great and really helpful, I'm sure, to all of our audience. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, we now have a little break and everything else will kick off at 12.30. Um, I'll be over at the manager circle in the sessions section. Uh, and in the meantime, remember to check out the networking and expo booths. So thank you very much and I'll see you all soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys. That was great. Thank you. Are, are, can everyone still see us? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I just say thank you to you, and um, I'll uh, chat to you in a wee bit. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Cheerio. Bye. Bye. Now. bye.